Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, earthlings. Uh, camera is there. Um, it's Friday night. Graham has had a scan today at our request our request what they wanted to do was um, four cycles of chemotherapy and then surgery and uh, after the first two cycles his scan was so magnificent the reduction um, after then we thought they would do another scan automatically we, we just assumed that's what they do but apparently not he received a phone call from someone at guys and st thomas's who said we're going to do a new scan what we're going to do is fly you out to london and do a new scan and then we're going to do surgery actually really radical and horrific surgery removing enormous parts of his body and I listened to the phone call I didn't speak to them Graham did but I I was listening and Graham said well actually what I would prefer is a scan to see where we're at you know and they said, well, no, that's not how it works. We've got a thing called standard of care. Four cycles of harsh chemotherapy and then surgery. And Graham, I was really proud of him. He pushed back and he said, well, I don't know. Um, I sent an email. I, I, can co I conducted an email to send to them to say well this that and the other there are lots of factors every human being is different there are lots of factors and Graham said to them did you read the email and they said yes we did and he said and what do you think and they said we don't have any data to support what your wife said in that email and so standard of care or cycles and we butcher your body basically and remove a lot of things and it's not just removal the uh, surgery any kind of surgery is extremely traumatic there are lots of risks infection and even under great healing circumstances, which this person from Guy's in St. Thomas's assured us would take eight to 12 months healing and that they perform about 110 of these operations a year and 10% die, <laughs> you know. But then they said it was like, well, oh God, I don't know, like, a billionth of a percent die or something like some shit like that. I don't know. Uh, it felt very much along the, the lines of the days of the lockdown where they just say, well, just do this shit, just do this shit across the board. If, and Graham was really good on the phone. And he just pushed back, pushed back and said no actually what no no could we have another scan eventually the guy said okay um we can have another scan and we can do it locally in gibraltar or spain and that's what happened today graham had his scan today he got the phone call about eight days ago. So he's been hitting the flaxseed oil, cottage cheese, the usual diet. Um, 
and he has become fitter and fitter and fitter and healthier and um tonight bless him he's just been sleeping on the cuddle chair and normally that's not normal for graham normally graham is obsessed on the internet he sits on his mac upstairs and uh with cushions but he sits in a very uh in a chair and then there are creases in the skin and and i think that affects the human body as well but he came downstairs and um sleeping like a baby in a cot and i've been watching him for the last hour i mean i've been doing that for the last few months just watching him watching him watching him while he sleeps getting the temperature gone on his forehead beep, and checking checking all the time and of course the hospital can't do that but I don't I'm not comfortable with their term standard of care four cycles operation I'm just not comfortable with that is there any thinking outside of the box any 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 at all i'm not saying everybody should think outside the box but of course this has been an extremely uh stressful thing for both of us and lots of fear lashings of fear um and between the two of us having to be really coercive and let's work together. How can we fix this? What's causing this? What are the underlying issues? So um, his last scan is um, uh, Benji and I calculated the reduction as 71% reduction from the initial scan so the scan graham had today we just don't know has it grown has it shrunk we just don't know i believe it is greatly reduced because his symptoms basically have been enormously reduced <laughs> I can't go into the details of uh, his exact condition. But it is interesting that although what we've encountered, the, the carers at St Bernard's have been wonderful. I can't sing their praises enough. But they're the nurses and the doctors and they are working within their own confines. And they have been so wonderful. But the ultimate decisions are basically butchery. Uh, um, the surgeons, it, it, it just seems to me, they're just, they're just intent, intent, focus, this is what we do. And the guy he got the call from basically said, no one's ever pushed back from jib. They just accepted, had half their body caught, cut away. Um, and he said in the end to Graham, I was not involved in the call. I was just listening. He said, OK, we can do radiotherapy. You know, if you're they were just not interested in the email, in the shrinkage of the tumour, of the progress of the. And um, today, of course, we go in and first time Graham went for a scan, we were both terrified. I mean, we were absolutely petrified. Today was completely different. We're used to it now. We're, we're sort of in the system. But they'd done other scans and uh, we'd had meetings and we were so scared. And after having gone through the medical system and the four cycles of oncology, really harsh regime, regimen, 
they call it a regimen of cisplatinum gemstatabin. Um, we sort of feel, we're feeling our way through this shit. Um, I've been observing him. I've been, after temperature gun, I've been watching him, his food, um, analysing him. And tonight, just watching him nodding off on the cuddle chair with the Moroccan poof. There's no way he'd done that before. That's like a normal guy falling in, asleep in front of the telly. There's no way. And it's not, it's a wife a husband, a partner, who can see the details, the real details. And what frightens me is that the medical profession don't have the data of people who, for example, may refuse oncology. They may refuse all treatment, or they may accept some treatment but reject others. And the lack of data, and the thing is, cisplatin, has been around since the 1970s. Don't, don't give me the bullshit, guys, that you haven't had the time to put the data in or people who reject treatment. I know my Graham and I'm watching him go from strength to strength. What has um, destroyed Graham is the cisplatin, which of course has attacked tumour um, so he's doing okay but um, he does get tired he has bouts of energy and then bouts of fatigue and god knows what permanent damage cisplatin has done gemstatabin uh, I mean that can uh, uh, has its own its own I'm sitting here tonight <coughs> on the boat, just me, no kids, just me and Graham. And what I'm loving is just watching my old man, really, he's snoring, he's relaxed, he looks fabulous, um, he has energy during the day, he's doing fantastically well. And... Um, the shoes that I bought, the Shinder Cinderella shoe, that's what that is. And the Cinderella shoe is nothing to do with my feet looking better than they are. It's to do with my family and Graham and a representation of how we are as a family. And I've never spent £60 on a pair of shoes, but I bought these beauties today. And this is um, kind of represents my life. And I know Graham is doing amazingly well. I know that the cottage cheese and flaxseed oil has been miraculous. Nothing short of miraculous. And I hope that the scan he had today is going to shock the knickers off the... Um, I can't think of the name of the people uh, they're called urologists the professor urologists at Guy's and St Thomas's and also the eminent uh, urologists here in Gibraltar I know and I feel in my heart that all is well and um, it'll be
probably about six or seven days until we get a result. And then of course we'll have to go and have a meeting with the urologist. And they will say a lot of stuff. And I deeply suspect that even if there is enormous shrinkage, they are going to err us to surgery, which surgery is, um, well, surgery is an enormous trauma. And then to remove huge parts of the human body, um, and then the risk of infection and the trauma and the healing time could be eight to 12 months and yada 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 um perhaps we won't be able to avoid that maybe that that will be the only way to save graham's life but then why did the cancer pop up in a certain place and could it even after all medieval surgery could it pop up in another place and I just feel that the best way to treat with cancer is an underlying. Obviously, if there's a tumour that's interfering, you've got to have um, oncology and chemotherapy or radiotherapy. But <laughs> the idea that one would have um, radical surgery and remove lots of parts of the body, I mean... To me, that's ridiculous. Uh, I had a Veruca when I was a kid, and it was really bad. I actually had two, and the doctor said, well, there are two ways of doing it. We can use a chiropodist, or we can cut it out of her foot. <laughs> my mother said cut it out of her foot, two of them, in the heel of my foot. And they put a wooden spoon between my teeth, and I was like... Ugh! And um, they gave me a little whiff of gas and I held my mother's hand. She was there throughout the whole thing. And he cut into the heel of my foot. He cut like that deep. Um, and then he put a load of iodine on. And he did say to my mum, it probably won't be successful because it's a virus and it will spread. Anyway, I went home and I, I looked at my heel and I fainted when I saw he dug cones cones so deep and of course the verrucas came back i've still got the scars and eventually i went to a chiropodist who put drops on and and treated it week after week so god and i still remember that i mean surgery that's a big thing but that to me is a i mean it's huge and the kind of surgery they're talking about with Graham is like eight hours. No, no, no. And he's, his symptoms and everything, I can't go into the details of the exact problem he's got, but what the reason he's tired and stuff is from the um, chemotherapy. It's not from the condition. That's why he's tired. It's from the chemotherapy. And he had um, symptoms from medication they gave him on the chemotherapy. And then the ginger took over from that. And we just dumped the domperidon. Um, and the oncologist admitted, you know, us doctors, we give you one thing which creates a new problem then we give you something else which creates a new problem and um and today was really fantastic really really fantastic i really felt quite victorious like me and graham is going well um and i do feel that the the radiologist said to him we will send the results within the hour to the um, urology department. And that was at three o'clock in the afternoon and we have not had a desperate phone call from urology going, oh, you've got to come and have yourself butchered, you know? Um, 
well, it's Friday. I suppose they're off Saturday, Sunday. I suppose Monday, Tuesday. Um, I am dreading the conversation with the urologist. They're going to say, only way to survive, Graham, is butchery, basically. And I, if that is the only way, then we do it. But, um, well, let's see. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is for me tonight, I've been watching him like an angel. He's just re so relaxed. I've never seen him this relaxed before. Sleeping and uh, watching telly. And this is a, a new thing. And just lovely. Seeing him enjoy himself. So... We wait and see what happens. Thank you very much for listening.